Hello, everyone. Today we are going to give a presentation about Kubernetes Six Storage. My name is Xin Yang. I work at VMware in the cloud storage team. Hi, I'm Michelle. I am a software engineer at Google. So here are the Six Storage leads. Sada Ali from Google and myself are co-chairs. Michelle from Google and Yan from Red Hat are tech leads of Six Storage. So we are going to talk about what is Six Storage, what we did in 1.19 release, what's coming in 1.20, our future plans. We will talk about cross-seek projects and working groups, and finally, how to get involved. So what is Six Storage? Six Storage is a special interest group that focuses on how to provide storage to pods in your Kubernetes cluster. Six Storage scope is in the storage control plane. It provides a way for containers in the pods to consume block of file storage. This can be persistent long-term storage that lives beyond the pods lifecycle, or it can be ephemeral temporary storage which becomes available when the pod is started and goes away when the pod goes down. Six storage is responsible for the life cycle of volumes used by pods. This includes provisioning a new volume, attaching a volume to the node, and mounting it so that the pod can use it, unmounting, detaching, and deleting the volume when it is no longer needed, taking snapshots so that it can be used to restore the volume if the original volume is corrupted for some reason. Uh, six storage is also looks at how to uh, influence the scheduling decisions based on topology information to see whether the storage is accessible to a node and make sure volume is scheduled to a node which can have access to the storage also, Six Storage is responsible for managing storage capacity, managing quota resources based on capacities or number of resources, and also provides ability to expand volume if a volume runs low in space. Uh, so here are some of the, uh, the Six Storage's uh, features. Uh, Six Storage owns the persistent volume and persistent volume claim feature. This allows storage vendor to create a volume and persist the data in this volume, which can be preserved even if the pod goes away. We have a storage class concept. The storage class provides a way for administrators to describe the classes of storage they offer. Uh, different classes might map to different quality of service levels. In dynamic provisioning, storage class is used to find out which provisioner should be used and what parameters should be passed to the provisioner when creating the volume. Kubernetes plugins uh, include entry plugins, auto tree flex volume, and CSI drivers. Both entry plugins and flex volume are deprecated. CSI driver is the recommended way to write plugins. Uh, the Kubernetes implementation of CSI has been GA since the 1.13 release. Six Storage has been working on migrating from entry plugins to auto tree CSI drivers. New features are only added to the CSI drivers. We will be talking about the uh, status of the uh, CSI migration in later slides. Uh, CSI is supported by multiple container orchestration systems and storage vendors. Other than persistent volumes, there are also ephemeral volumes. Ephemeral volume is uh, specified directly in a pod spec. It's mounted on the pod as a directory. Uh, and data can be stored in a file under that directory. Ephemeral volumes include secrets, config maps, and CSI inline volumes and so on. And its life cycle follows the life cycle of a pod. 
at the bottom of this slide, you will see the SIG storage homepage. Visit this page, you can find lots of information about the SIG. So now I'm going to talk about what we did in the 1.19 release. There were a few features that went beta in 1.19. Both Azure Disk and vSphere CSM migration was promoted to beta in 1.19. This is part of an effort to move entry cloud provider plugins to output tree CSR drivers. To use this feature, user must also deploy the equivalent CSI driver to on CSI migration uh, feature flag uh, that is a default on in 1.17 release and also the CSI migration provider feature gate for the corresponding cloud provider. In 1.19, CSI Windows was also promoted to beta. CSI Windows was introduced as an alpha feature in 1.18 release. CSI Windows relies on a CSI proxy to perform privileged operations, such as mount and format disks, because Windows containers are not privileged CSI drivers communicate to CSI proxy through a gRPC API. Uh, supported protocols include Block, SMB, and ISACASI. The other feature got promoted to beta was immutable secrets and config maps. This allows secrets and config maps to be read only. Both world expansion and world snapshot stayed in beta in 1.19 release, but we made lots of improvements. For world expansion, we added offline world expansion support detection. So CSI driver can return a failed precondition error code if only offline expansion is supported, but the user has requested a uh, expansion when volume is online. This way, Kubernetes CSI reset the sidecar will stop calling controller expand volume. For volume snapshot, we added a validation webhook to validate API objects, move the snapshot APIs and client library to a separate Go package. In 1.19, we also introduced a few new alpha features. We introduced this uh, uh, CSI storage capacity tracking uh, so we added a new CSI storage capacity API object in Kubernetes core API in the storage API group. Without this feature, pod scheduling was done without considering that the remaining storage capacity may not be enough to start a new pod. With this feature, CSI driver can report available capacities associated with the node topology and storage class through the get capacity CSI function. And Kubernetes scheduler will make placement decisions when choosing a node for a pod based on this information. This feature is a stepping stone for supporting dynamic provisioning for local volumes. The second alpha feature introduced in 2019 is generic ephemeral volume. Uh, Kubernetes has volume plugins uh, whose lifecycle is tied to a pod and can be used as a scratch space. For example, we have built-in empty dir volume type, or those type of plugins can be used to load some data uh, to a pod. For example, we have the built-in config map, secret volume types, or CSI inline volumes. This new generic ephemeral volume uh, is different. It actually allow any existing SOLI driver that supports dynamic provisioning to provision an ephemeral volume with the volume's life cycle bound to the pod. Uh, so this can be used to provide scratch storage that is different from the root disk. Um, all the parameters, all the parameters used in a storage class for the volume provisioning uh, are also supported by this uh, generic ephemeral volume. And all features supported with persistent volume claims are supported. That includes the storage capacity tracking, snapshots, and resizing. The third 
a uh, new other feature introduced in 2019 is uh, CSI volume health. Without this feature, Kubernetes does not check whether the volume is healthy or not after volume is provisioned. With this feature, uh, now CSI drivers can share abnormal volume conditions from the underlying storage system with Kubernetes so that they can be reported as events on PVCs or pods. This feature serves as a stepping stone towards programmatic detection and correction of volume health problems by Kubernetes. And the last uh, new alpha feature introduced in 2019 is the CSI driver policy for FS group. We added a new alpha level field that supports FS group uh, to the CSI driver. So uh, CSI drivers can now specify whether they support volume ownership and permission modifications. So that's all the beta and alpha features we added in 1.19. Now I'm going to hand it over to Michelle to talk about what's coming in the 1.20 release. All right, thank you, Xing. So um, in 1.20, we have a lot of good things planned that are uh, graduating. Um, first is the CSI volume snapshot feature. We are targeting GA in 1.20. Um, so this feature gives you the ability to be able to take snapshots of a persistent volume claim and then be able to create new PVCs from those snapshots. Um, so this is very important for, um, for supporting the uh, backup and restore uh, um, use cases in your applications. Um, the next feature that we are planning to graduate from alpha to beta is um, non-recursive volume ownership, um, specifically for the FS group setting. Um, this feature uh, gives you the ability in your pod to specify that you, um, you only want to change volume ownership um, of a volume only if the uh, group, the FS group setting has changed. So um, this is an important uh, performance enhancement for um, if you have a volume that has a lot of files on it and the ownership doesn't change very often, um, this will be an important feature for you to make your pods be able to start up faster. Um, the third feature that we are targeting beta in 120 is, is sort of related. It's the um, CSI driver policy for FS group. This is the ability for a CSI driver to be able to um, specify if they support FS group modifications or not. Um, this is planning uh, to graduate to beta in 120. And then the last uh, feature graduation is Azure File CSI migration, and this is targeting beta in 1.20. And after, I believe after this um, feature, Azure File graduates, that means all of the um, entry cloud provider plugins, um, which includes GCE, PD, AWS, EBS, uh, vSphere, um, and Azure Disk and OpenStack. Um, after, after 120, all of the CSI migration features will be beta. Um, and so that's for the graduating features. Um, also for new features that are being introduced, um, we are targeting a new feature to be able to pass pod service account tokens to CSI drivers. Um, that's targeted to be alpha in 1.20. Um, this, this is a really important feature to enable um, CSI ephemeral volumes, such as um, the cert manager and secret store um, that act um, that act on behalf of pods. Um, so having, being able to use, um, get the pod service account token to be able to make queries on behalf of the pod um, is an important uh, feature for those types of CSI plugins. 
And that's um, all that we have planned for 1.20. Uh, moving on to beyond 1.20, um, we have a couple of a number of different features um, in the pipeline. Um, first are the graduating features. Um, first is volume expansion. Uh, this has been uh, long in beta for quite a few releases now, and um, we are working on trying to iron out all the uh, remaining um, remaining sort of design issues. Um, and we're hoping to be able to target a GA of this feature in 1.21. Um, an important change that we're making is we are deprecating the um, online offline volume expansion CSI plugin capability. Um, the online and offline expansion is still supported. It's just that the actual CSI capability will be deprecated. And instead, we'll be using um, specific error codes to be able to um, determine if a plugin can support online or offline expansion. Um, the next, the other feature, major feature that we're planning on graduating within the next couple of releases is CSI migration. Um, so this is the effort to move all in-tree um, volume plugins to their CSI counterparts. So um, the after once all the plugins are beta in 1.20, then the next phase is going to be looking into um, targeting on by default in 1.21. And um, assuming all goes well, then GAing of the feature in 1.22, followed by the removal of the entry plugin um, code. So um, I think the important thing to take away here is that um, if you are a Kubernetes, if you are managing your own Kubernetes distribution, and you are using one of these entry cloud provider um, implementations, then um, then you will definitely want to be pay attention to the CSI migration feature and um, work towards uh, work towards um, deploying it and using it in your environments um, as as we plan to eventually uh, remove these plugins from the core of Kubernetes um, around starting around 122, 123 timeframe. Um, the last graduating feature that we have targeted is CSI Windows. Um, so this is being able to support uh, the Windows OS for CSI drivers. Um, I believe the target here is GA in 1.21. Um, this is also still, some of it is a little bit up in the air because um, there's the new, there's a new effort going on in SIG Windows for, um, for allowing uh, privileged containers in Windows. Um, so that might adjust some of the timelines here, but I think um, for the most part, our, the whole, the main plan we have right now is to target GA of at least the CSI proxy Windows support um, in 1.21. So those are all the graduating features. Um, we have a number of other uh, features that are sort of in the design and prototype phase um, that we should be able to see sort of new um, alpha implementations in the upcoming releases. Um, first up is recovery from volume expansion failure. Um, this is right now the way the volume expansion feature works is you can't actually um, undo a volume expansion request uh, once it's started, if even if it was failing. So um, there is a design and prototype going on to sort of figure out how we can um, implement the recovery behavior in a safe way and also have it align with um, some of the other expansion efforts that are going on in other SIGs, um, such as the um, there's a pod resizing uh, effort going on. So we will want to make sure we align our APIs um, to be consistent with those. Um, another feature currently under design is um, 
to be able to support non-recursive SC Linux and CSI driver configuration. This is very similar to the effort that is going on currently for FS Group, but also applied to SC Linux. Um, another feature is uh, um, adding more uh, plugin support for the CSI migration feature. So the initial phase of CSI migration was targeting um, the Intrigue cloud providers. Um, and the next phase will be to target some of the um, non-cloud provider specific uh, implementations, at, starting with Ceph. Um, so that is currently under prototype. Um, another feature that we're currently actively designing and discussing right now is volume groups. Uh, this is sort of the notion that a group of PVCs are related to each other in some way, such as um, they're all, all the PVCs are replicas of a particular uh, stateful set, as an example. Um, and this concept is going to uh, enable a lot of various use cases, um, some of which include being able to have snapshot consistency across multiple volumes. Um, and another use case is to be able to um, do failure domain spreading across volumes in the same group. Um, another a uh, feature being actively worked on right now is the generic data populator feature. Um, this, this feature offers the ability to, uh, to create third party, um, I guess third party populators that can basically um, take a newly provisioned PVC, inject it with some data, and then hand it off to the actual uh, pod that's using that volume. Um, so this is a this is a very interesting use case that can, for example, some use cases include um, being able to uh, populate uh, particular data sets into a volume um, before giving it to a user. Um, also being able to populate things from like third party um, third party backup solutions and and other um, use cases like that um, so that's generic data populators um, and then the last uh, major feature that's currently in prototyping uh, right now is the container object storage interface um, this is going to sort of follow the um, patterns that CSI has, uh, developed in that um, the container object storage interface is is going to be designed as sort of a cross uh, a portable um, object storage uh, interface layer um, for different object storage implementations. Um, this effort is currently under prototype, and there are um, there are weekly design meetings for these. So. Definitely, if you are interested in these efforts, um, please uh, join us in, in SIG Storage, and you can um, get you can go ahead and participate in, in these this, all the all of these discussions for these various features. All right. So, um, in addition to the projects that the SIG is directly working on. Um, we are also involved and in working with other SIGs in Kubernetes um, to work on some cross-SIG projects. Um, first up is the Data Protection Workgroup. This is a workgroup that is run by both SIG Storage and SIG Apps. Um, one of the major features that the workgroup is uh, focusing on right now is how to implement uh, quiescing and unquiescing to do application level snapshots. Um, there is a feature that the work group is, um, is working on with SIG node called the container notifier. And this will basically provide a way to, um, for, um, a, for another application or another controller to be able to run um, 
to be able to run different commands in a container to um, stop and stop and uh, I guess start and stop um, the file systems or writes uh, while snapshots are taken are being taken. So that's a um, very important effort that we're currently under design and prototype right now. Um, in addition, uh, we're working with SIG apps on a number of features related to stateful sets. First is um, supporting volume expansion um, for stateful sets through the uh, stateful set um, volume claim templates. And then the other uh, feature we're working on is to be able to clean up PVCs uh, when a stateful set is deleted or scaled down. So um, these are both efforts that we're sort of co-working on with uh, SIG apps. So um, be on the lookout for those. Um, and then with SIG scheduling, um, we are working on a new alpha feature um, to be able to prioritize uh, pod scheduling based off of available volume capacity in a, in a particular node. Um, this feature is going to target alpha in 1.20. All right, so um, as you can see, uh, there are a ton of different features and projects that we are working on in SIG storage, and we would definitely appreciate um, all the help we can get. So if you are interested in getting involved, um, please um, go to our SIG storage community page. Um, there you can find the details for our bi-weekly meetings um, every 9 a.m. Pacific time, um, every other Thursday. Um, please join the mailing list so that you can get uh, access to the calendar. and. Um, and also the site has links for our Slack channel um, that you can also join and um, feel free to ask questions or um, if you want to get involved with anything, feel free to ask questions in the Slack as well. Um, if you want to get, one of the best ways to start getting involved is to just, um, just start looking at the code. Um, one of my favorite methods is to just start with the main method and walk down it um, until you get to the part you need. Um, it's a great way to run through the code and sort of start at a top level and see where it's going. Um, we have a lot of different bugs and issues that are filed um, every day. Um, and we could definitely use help uh, fixing them. So please, um, if you're interested, Look through the open six storage issues in the Kubernetes Kubernetes repo, uh, along with the Kubernetes CSI repo. Look for the help wanted labels. Also, the good um, there's a good first issue uh, label as well for uh, those that are getting started. And um, and if if you're not able to find anything there, like feel free to just um, you know ask in the Slack again and someone can go and help you out and try to find something for you. All right, and um, some other ways, some other ways that um, folks can help out is to help write features. So as you can see, we have a lot of features that are sort of in progress and we can definitely use um, help uh, implementing various parts of those features. Um, so again, if, if any of these features we're working on interests you, please um, attend one of our six storage meetings. Um, go ahead and ask in the ch chat, and we can definitely connect you with the right people um, to, get, um, to get started on writing these features. We have um, every... Uh, every six storage meeting, we go through our six storage planning spreadsheet, um, which is where we track all of the features we're working on for a specific Kubernetes release. And at the beginning of every quarter, we um, plan the features that we uh, want to work on for the next Kubernetes release. So um, these are definitely 
a, a great place to start uh, to start getting started. And if there is a new feature that you're interested in that isn't being actively worked on and you want to um, work on that, uh, please uh, please also attend the um, SIG storage meetings to talk about it and so that we can you know get it onto our planning spreadsheet and we can make sure all the right people are involved and that the release uh, or that the feature will be appropriately tracked by the Kubernetes release team. All right, so um, that's how you can get involved with the SIG. Um, and with if I guess this session is the last session of KubeCon, but um, if you've missed, if you're interested in seeing other storage sessions that were going on, um, here are the links to um, a lot of the other storage presentations that have already happened. Um, I think all of these uh, videos should be um, available on YouTube in the next couple of days. So um, if you see something that is interesting to you, please feel free to um, check out those other sessions. All right, um, so I think we are um, done for the presentation here and I guess we'll go to a Q&A now. Thank you.